Hey folks, this is Phil from Alabama Hot Sauce. That's alabamahotsauce.com on the web. Today I'm with you with something a little bit different. This little video is going to demonstrate how to make the traditional Mexican pepper ristra. This is a common sight in many, many, many states in Mexico. And it's also very common, matter of fact, maybe more, even more popular in the southwestern states of the U.S. like Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and Southern California. This is the traditional Texas ristra, the traditional Mexican ristra, and I'm going to show you how to make it. Now, thank you. To make a ristra, you need a couple of supplies. First, we're going to start with a pretty heavy string. I'm using a coreless braided cotton string. It happens to be dyed red because it blends right in with the ristra. And it's pretty good and strong. In addition to that, at the end, you're going to need a little bit of sisal rope. A small diameter is better than a thick diameter, but almost any sisal rope will work, or sisal string. We're going to need some scissors. We're going to need a chef knife. And of course, we're going to need some peppers. And my rooster today is going to be made from dried Gajillo peppers. Very popular in Texas, Arizona, and all of Mexico. As a matter of fact, much of Central America. These peppers were dehydrated. And as you can see, they're in all kinds of shapes because this is a natural, real dehydrated product. This is not some fake thing. These are not peppers that were dehydrated specifically to make them look pretty on roosters. But trust me when I tell you, they're going to look absolutely great. First decision you have to make to make a ristra is you have to decide how long it's going to be. Given the length and shape of these peppers and the beauty of them, to be honest with you, I couldn't do justice to this unless the ristra was at least 14, 16, 17 inches long. I'm going to start by taking a yardstick and let's say 18 inches. If I want to make an 18 inch ristra, I'm going to start by putting the end of my, my line down here at about 26 inches. That gives me 8 inches of uh, leeway for making sure the hanger is plenty long. I'm then going to drop it down to the back side of the yardstick and I'm going to cut it. Now what that gives me, when doubled up, it gives me a string that's about 25 inches in length. We're basically, basically going to be tying or macrameing these peppers into this ristra. So I'm going to need a third string that's going to be quite a bit longer than that one. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make it about 36 inches long. I have a horrible habit of cutting this, this third string too short and having to make a little patch up job. So. I cut it there. Because we have a doubled up string that's about 26 inches long. We got a third string that's a yard long. We're going to put it up here and tie a single overhand knot in the end of it. So all three of these things are tied together. And we want to cinch this knot up really, really, really tight. Coreless braided rope string is perfect for this because it's really easy to pull a tight knot if there's no core in the braid. And just to make it attractive, I'm going to snip the ends off there, okay? Now, in front of me, I got my trusty ladder. I'm actually sitting in the demonstration kitchen at our commercial kitchen. That way I can get away from everybody. There's not a lot of noise. And I can make, to the best of my skill, a pretty decent video. What we're going to do is we're going to invert the loop at the end of this string. And I'm going to hang it on this little hook on my ladder. I love this ladder because A, it has a hook built in it for making my ristra. And secondly, I can sit down while doing this instead of standing. Okay? What we're actually going to do to build a ristra is we're going to thread 
the peppers into this loop by the stem. We could do one of them like this is done, but it makes no sense to do that. So I thread them in in groups of three. When you thread these strings into the, into the restra, you want to thread them in such a way that they all face in different directions, okay? Now when you do that, you pull your fingers down real tight and cinch it around the restra. You take your third string, you pass it through the back, grab it with your thumb, take your other thumb and thumb and grab the loose end, and you've made a slip knot. Now you take that knot and you pull it down exceptionally tight. Can't stress how important it is to make this knot and all subsequent ones tight. Otherwise, the pepper will simply fall out of it. We've got a beginning of a pepper restra. Doesn't look all that great. Matter of fact, looks pretty scraggly. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to be adding layers into this restra. And when we do, we orient them so we simply fill up empty spaces. Uh oh, sorry, got one. So I put in three peppers here. I tie another one of these slip knots. And I pull it down tight. Now, the pepper is starting to look a little bit better, but wait till the end, it's gonna look beautiful. The story of the Mexican Ristra is a pretty interesting one. It would not be a surprise to anyone that peppers are a core part of the diet in any Mexican culture. They are also a core kind of a diet in the Mexican Texan culture and Mexican New Mexico culture that grew up when Americans mixed with, with Mexicans. Pepper, being a core ingredient, is in every Mexican home. In addition to that, pepper is a core commercial crop in Mexico. It's not only used in every meal and every dish you can imagine in Mexican cuisine, but it's also one of their most important cash crops. Certain regions of Mexico, especially out in the western part of the country, are known for their prowess in growing peppers. Peppers, in a very dry and hot atmosphere like we, we find in the southwest of the U.S. or in Mexico, were very hard to keep. As a matter of fact, when you pick a pepper there, if you don't have a way to cool it and store it, naturally, it's going to dry. That's just the way it works in that atmosphere. But Mexicans who harvested peppers wanted to make sure that their harvest was secure from mold and mildew and things that would damage it. So they would pull their pepper harvest and they'd lay it out on the ground for drying. That worked perfectly. Like I say, they're environment there acted exactly like a dehydrator and so dry and pepper laying out on the ground spread out was very very successful they would go uh, at least once a day with big rakes and they'd rake it and move it around and make sure all the pepper was getting plenty of the sunshine getting plenty of the drying air and in a period of about 10 days their peppers would be completely dry because women had for centuries been going out into the pepper field since pepper is a core part of their diet and picking peppers for personal use in the household. And what they would do is they'd bring them back home 
and they'd bundle a bunch of them together and tie them with a string and hang them up in the kitchen or on the porch and they would dry them and they would have a good clean constant source of peppers for their cooking. When they needed one they'd simply pull it off the string, throw it in the pot to season their food. Drying peppers on the ground caused two significant problems. First, birds are immune from the effects, the heat effects of capsaicin, which is in the peppers. And as a result of that immunity, they don't taste that hot steam that we taste and that all other mammals taste when they eat a pepper. So the birds would just feast on the peppers laid on the ground. The fact that the birds were immune to the burn of pepper was a good thing for the pepper but a bad thing for the Mexicans because the birds would just simply eat up the harvest. To make it even worse, because they were laid out on the ground and because they were in such a dry area with wind constantly blowing, the peppers when they were finally gathered from drying were covered in sand. As a matter of fact, very early excavations of burial sites for ancient Mexicans and people in South America found a tremendous problem with the teeth being worn down. And this, in all likelihood, came from the fact that their method of drying their primary food crop, peppers, was prone to getting sand in it and that sand, cooked into all their dishes, would actually wear down their teeth, okay? They wanted to get away from this drying on the ground. So they took a hint from the Mexican women who had already been traditionally hanging their peppers on a ball of string to dry them, and they started making these long strings of peppers that they could hang up outdoors, off the ground, away from the wind blowing, and they could hang them in places where the birds couldn't get to them. So the habit of drying peppers in a long string became commonplace. And within a matter of a few years, all peppers that were grown in Mexico were dried on this long string. The word ristra in Spanish means stream. So when we talk about a ristra, what we are talking about in Hispanic culture and Southwest U.S. culture is peppers on a stream. So this is, uh, the ristra is a perfect name for it. And it's a perfect example of the industrious way people respond to problems when it comes to commercially using foods. Okay. You go, especially to parts of the western United States, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, even Southern California, you will see pepper ristras hanging everywhere. It is very common to see them hanging on the front porch or the side porch. And they are hanging many times now for decorative purposes, but remember, the Mexicans didn't do it for decorative purposes. They did it for food commerce. All you have to do when you're ready to use a pepper in your cooking is you reach up on your ristra, you break one off, you throw it in your pot with your food, and you now have a seasoned uh, pot of food or stew or whatever dish the Mexican woman of the house happened to be making on that day. As a matter of fact, peppers and dry peppers and having a way to have them in your house and having a way to cultivate them were so important that the ristra is considered somewhat of a lucky charm in Mexico. As a matter of fact, they believe that as long as you have a ristra handling, 
Bahaini, that it will bring good fortune and good luck to their family. Let's talk about what, what good court fortune means to people. To us in the United States in our modern times, good fortune might mean not only having a great family life and a great family, but it might mean having a lot of stuff, having a vacation house, having lots of money in savings, being able to retire at an early age. But to Mexican people, two, for, good fortune was basically two things. Plenty of food to feed their family and good luck in the harvest of their food crops, okay? As a result, the rooster became synonymous with good fortune to Mexican people. And in that sort of myth that grew up about it being good fortune, another thing uh, grew, grew common. Mexican people would never pull the last pepper off their ristra. Because if you don't have a ristra, you don't have good fortune. And if you don't have good fortune, your crops will suffer and your family won't survive. So the Mexican people, when pulling peppers for making recipes, never pull that last pepper. As a matter of fact, if you pull the last pepper off your last ristra, or before you pulled the last pepper off the last reason, you would rush to a neighbor or a friend and you'd get them to give you one of their reasons. Because remember, everybody had them. Because the Mexican housewife never wanted their home to be without a reason. Number one, you can't cook without it. And number two, they believed it was bad luck. This reason I'm showing you how to make as I think I mentioned before, is made out of completely natural dried peppers. What it's common to find in places like Hatch, New Mexico, are ristras that have been preserved because they're being purchased purely for their beauty. And the way they preserve them traditionally is they make the ristra out of these same peppers that I'm doing here. The peppers are perfect shape, unlike these. And then they spray them with lacquer. So it preserves them forever. This reach I'm making is not that. This reach I'm making is a food product. If you get one of these from Alabama hot sauce, I fully expect that you might actually hang it up in your kitchen, that you might actually pull peppers off of it and use it to season your food. So there's no preservative on these things. They will last a very, very long time because these peppers are very properly dried. As a matter of fact, these measure about 5% uh, moisture content, which is really, really dry as food goes. So these things will hang inside your house, in your kitchen, or out on your front porch for a long, long time, probably a year, probably a year and they'll be just as good for you and good to eat as they are right now. Eventually, the peppers will lose their usability and they'll dry up and at that point, it's time to get another ristra and hang it in that same spot. This thing is made for hanging in your kitchen. They're beautiful. As you'll see in just a moment when I finish this one, they're practical. And I really would encourage you, if you have a reaster, make sure it's a real one. Make sure it's not one artificially preserved. And when you're cooking a pot of soup or stew or chili, pull a couple of these things off the reaster, just snap them right off and toss them in that pot. It'll give you a wonderful, absolutely great flavor to that stew and it'll let you use something that's, that's at both times beautiful and practical. This is starting to get pretty long there. That's probably a little over a foot. I'm gonna continue to add some peppers. I can't hardly stand to stop this when I get started because the only thing that makes a reaster more beautiful is adding three more peppers to it. 
And so I have a tendency when I'm shooting for 12 to 14 to 15 inches, I have a tendency to make them more like 18 or 20. But hey, that's the way it is. Now, when I'm finished with this reaster, it will weigh probably about three pounds, I'm guessing. And that's, to, to get a three pound dried pepper reaster, that means we started with probably 12 to 14 pounds of uh, fresh peppers. Uh, I dried these in the culinary baking oven, which is a great way to dry. It didn't take very long at all. And they came out just absolutely delicious tasting. So I, I, I'm pretty happy with these. And like I say, I'm most happy with the fact that I didn't use any preservatives on them. I didn't press them as they were drying to make them dry in a perfect shape. I dried them just like the Mexicans would have found them when they strung them up outside their door. I was told by a local historian here at our local university that it would not have been unusual at the end of the growing season, about this time of year, now remember, that's a end of the growing season is kind of a loaded term in Mexico because the growing season for peppers is essentially year round. But at the end of the season, it would not have been unusual for a family to have eight, nine, or 10, or 12, or 20 reasters hanging on their porch. You gotta remember, there's barely a type of food that they didn't use peppers in. In addition to that, when I'm using dried gajillos for this, Mexicans would have had reestras made out of the full range of the peppers that they, that they use. So that, they'd have had chili arbols, they'd have had gajillos, they'd have had pecan. They would have probably had a version of what is now Anaheim peppers. They'd have had all kinds of peppers hanging out of their porch because they had all kinds of demands for the cooking they were doing. Now, as we start getting to the top of the ristra, you really gotta start paying attention to missing and empty spots. Because I want this thing to, when I'm finished, I want it to be nearly flat at the top, okay? Folks, I was not kidding when I said I don't know how to stop this. This is so satisfying to me adding peppers to this ristra. I love the look of them, I love the smell of them. I wish you guys could smell it in here right now. These peppers are sort of smoky smelling. They're sweet smelling. They are, uh, I can smell a little bit of heat coming through on the peppers, but they are just absolutely wonderful. Now look at that thing, that's a beautiful, well I gotta add, let me add a couple more right here. I know folks, go ahead and laugh. I was serious when I said I have a hard time stopping. But let's, let's steal this spot right here just a little bit with these beautiful little, matter of fact, these are big dry peppers. This couple I'm putting on right now. These things are serious. All right, that's the end of it. Now, get to the top. And remember I told you we're pulling these knots just as hard as we can pull them. When I get to the top, I'm gonna do a total of three of these knots, okay? There we go. That is a traditional Mexican ristra. But it doesn't look very good at the top. So we're gonna do another little thing. Since we're not only making a practical food item here, but it's also going to be a food item we're going to use for decoration. I'm going to decorate it up a little bit. Mexicans did this also. Mexicans, Mexican women were just as sensitive to style and decor as women are today. And so whenever they could, they did what they could to make their house look good. One of the ways to do that is decorate your wrist up a little bit. I went to a farm and I got some dried corn. And these are the shucks 
that came off of that dried corn. I brought them back here to the kitchen. I stripped off all the ugly outside husks that sometimes have mold on them in spots and water spots because they sat in the field dried and got rained on. And I, sh I took off all the, the outer ones and I collected only the inner husks. I then put them in water and soaked them. Many people don't know corn husks are actually almost a form of paper. They will last a long, long, long time. Okay? And putting this these corn husks in water allowed me to make them real soft and supple so I can work with them. Now what I'm going to do, matter of fact, I'm going to change the camera orientation for you guys so that you actually... I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut the ends of the husks off so they're pretty square, okay? And I'm going to do that on both ends. I'm going to take my chef's knife. I'm going to use my hand to cover up the vast majority of this. What I want to end up with is I want to end up with a center section that has not been cut, but on both ends, I want it a little bit shredded. So I'm going to take my chef's knife and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to cut all the way through these husks. Now, what you oftentimes saw Mexicans doing is dragging the ends of the husk across a thorny branch. That would cut them as well. In Hatch, New Mexico, I saw a guy making them and he had a board that he had driven nails in all the way through and then he flipped it over and he would just drag the husks through these nails in the board. But I think this works just fine. So I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the same, th same thing to the other side. Remember, I want to preserve a section here in the middle that has not been cut. So I turn the husks over and I start dragging them. You're going to do this and use your hand as a block. You have to use a drop ended uh, chef's knife. So when you put it up at an incline, there's no way the blade can get to your hand. The blade can bunt up against your side of your hand and your thumb without cutting it. So what we've got here is we've got a bunch of corn husks that are cut on the ends. Now I'll show you how we put them on the restrip. Here's where the sisal rope comes in. I'm gonna cut off a good size length of this sisal rope. We're then going to take we're then going to take our husks we're going to place them behind and wrap them around our remaining string. Okay? Now come here in the middle and I'm going to put a simple overhand knot in this sisal rope. Well, my feeble 70 year old hands don't like doing this. So I put that knot on the sisal rope and then I pull it tight. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the rope layer by layer as tight and as flat as we can. So I'm going to work my way up. Layer after layer, pulling it tight. serves a practical purpose. It keeps the
husk on there and it looks pretty. This little rope, as you all know, has a great advantage in that knots stay tied in it. When you, when you pull a knot in a sisal rope, it stays there. To get down to the end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this around one more time. I'm gonna tuck this through the loop and I'm gonna pull it tight. I think I'm gonna pull it tight. Well, I'm eventually gonna pull it tight. And what this gives you is it gives you a tough, almost impenetrable knot. This will slide up and down. So what we're gonna do here at the bottom is we're gonna fluff this all out. And we're gonna pull it down and lower it onto our restrut. And there we have an absolutely beautiful, traditional Mexican pepper restrut. Folks, this is also found in the southern United States, especially in the Hatch, Mexico area, in abundance. These things are for sale in almost every shop in that part of the Hatch Valley. Same applies to shops in, in southern Texas, southern Arizona. And oftentimes, those restrus that they sell have been sprayed with lacquer to convert them from being a food item to being a oxygen isolated decorative product. In other words, an item that you would put out during certain seasons maybe and put it back up in the attic and pull it out much like you would a Christmas decoration. That's not how you use these things, folks. This research is designed to be not only beautiful, but I want to see the peppers go missing on this. I want to see you snapping these things off and tossing them in your pot of chili or tossing them in your pot of chicken stew or tossing them in your baked, the bottom of the broiler for your baked lamb or whatever it is you're cooking. These peppers are not excessively hot. They provide a dark and a smoky and a slightly bright, uh, little bit of heat taste to your food. And I'm telling you, it's wonderful. We in the United States don't know what we missed when we did not get on to the tradition of the place where many of our ancestors come from, which is Mexico, of using dried peppers in our menus. All right, folks, I've enjoyed making this for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I know this is gonna be a long video. I'm sorry about that. It's just the way it is. It takes a while to make them. I guess a young person can make one in 10 minutes, but they don't have these 70 year old hands like I do. I've already made one early this morning. Two's my limit in a day. The arthritis gets to me. So no matter if I wanted to, I couldn't make another one probably, let's see, today's Wednesday, probably Friday before I could make two more of them because it simply wears out my hands. You can see these on our website at alabamahotsauce.com. As a matter of fact, we sell them. I think I sell mine for a price uh, way better than what you would find in other more commercial shops that specialize in, in things of this nature, like what you find down at Hatch. I've seen these things for sale for $70, $80, $90. They're sometimes made into round Christmas wreaths and they sell for up to $200. Mine are not that expensive. I believe on my website for an 18 inch uh, Ristra, you get them for $54, I believe, something like that. Anyway, go to alabamahotsauce.com and take a look. I want to point out to you that many times that Ristra, when they're originally made traditionally, were made with fresh peppers. I've made them in, with fresh jalapenos, for instance. Unfortunately, we live in a part of the country where we have high humidity and we don't have a very long, hot summer season. So as a result, what happens is if, we, if I make them and sell them out of fresh peppers, which is what I would really love to do, oftentimes mold will get to them before they get a chance to dry. So I make mine out of the dried peppers so you don't have to worry if you purchase one about the danger of 
maybe one in four of them, instead of drying and curing as they're supposed to, turn into a moldy mess. I dry them in advance. I send them to you dried. Now, you're going to miss out on the first uh, 15, 20 days where you see the pepper naturally preserve itself by going from fresh to dry, but you won't miss out on the next 12 months of enjoying looking at what a rooster is supposed to look like anyway, which is a method of dried pepper storage. I want to thank you folks for joining me today. I would greatly appreciate it before you leave if you would subscribe to our website, give us a thumbs up, and ring that bell so you will know and YouTube will notify you every time I put up a new web, uh, web video here on Alabama Hot Sauce. Again, folks, thank you for being with me. I'll see you next time.